Come on, guys, run! Get to the chopper! Well, sorry you didn't make it this time, losers. I'm finished for the night. Peace. You know, I've got to say that Left 4 Dead 2 is one of the hardest games I've played in a long, long time. And I do feel obligated to review it, so here we go. Left 4 Dead 2 has a lot in common with the previous title, Left 4 Dead. For starters, it's made by Valve and uses the very outdated Source engine. You are still one of four survivors trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. This time you're in the deep south, and for the most part you're trying to get the heck to safety. But here's where the changes come in. They have amped up all the numbers. There's far more guns, far more special infected. To supplement your health, you no longer are limited to a med kit and pills. Players now have access to a defibrillator, which takes place of the med kit and can be used to resuscitate a downed pal. Also helping you out is the adrenaline shot, which gives you just enough juice to sprint down the corridors like Usain Bolt. The core of Left 4 Dead 2 is about playing online with three other people as you fight the zombies and try to make your way to safety. Playing the game offline by yourself is essentially useless because the computer's survivor AI is pathetic. Sure, computer coach will pick up a pipe bomb, but don't expect him to chuck it anywhere. This time around, you get to play the role of Coach, Rochelle, Nick, and Ellis, all of which look very different, they're mildly politically correct, or at least token characters, and they have no unique abilities. Its predecessor was no cakewalk until you learned some of the tricks. This, however, is the hardest FPS I have ever played. Yeah, you're gonna die a lot. Oh! <laughs> Shit. 2012. Halloween 2. Anything directed by Rob Zombie. It seems that every time I want to use a health pack, I end up going down. To make matters worse, this is the only game I can think of where you may accidentally shoot one of your teammates. And that's going to happen here often. But not only can you accidentally shoot your friends, you can accidentally hit them with a guitar or a baseball bat, even a katana. See, part of the problem is that they included these melee weapons to help you beat off these zombies, but it just ends up hurting your own team. If you're a real sadist, you might want to try realism mode. Realism mode takes away the blue outline from your character, your teammates, and objects on the ground that you can use. This makes it very difficult to determine where things are. And another thing it does, you can't get rescued anymore, so good luck. Now I enjoy a challenge just as much as any video game master, and I'll tell you, I played this game for three consecutive nights, and at no point did I get any headroom at all on Expert. Heck, when I played the first game, I had it beat within a week, but here, it seems as though advanced, and this one is harder than Expert in the first game. In fact, normal on this feels a lot like Expert in the first game. So if you're playing this game on Expert with realism on, you are really testing your skills. And that's something I appreciate. They did make some effort to tie together a storyline here. For example, in one campaign you may get on a boat, and in your next campaign you have to go find fuel for the boat. And that brings in another good point, creative level design. In said fuel finding campaign, you do have to progress through the level only to come back to the same place you start. And you have to signal for the boat. In the meantime, all of the items you found on your way to get the fuel are now depleted because you used them. This can make playing as a team even more frustrating because you have to tell people not to pick up health packs. Making everything a little bit tougher for you is a new cast of special infected zombies. Joining the previous game's Smoker, Tank, Boomer, Witch, Hunter, you now have to deal with the Charger, who is kind of like a buffed up, one-armed tank. Weaker, but still very strong, he'll run into you, causing you to fly through the air, separating you from your teammates because that's lovely. The Spitter is kind of a female equivalent to the Smoker, she has some gag problems, and she spits up acid. You don't want to touch this because it knocks her life down quickly. The jockey is a little orangutan looking fella, and he'll jump on you on sight and steer you into something such as the spitter or off a bridge, which is very convenient. 
the typical horde gets some minor upgrades at points too. You particularly don't want to run against any white policemen zombies because you have to shoot them, wait till they turn around and shoot them in the back. There's no other way to take them down and it can be very frustrating when dealing with other foes. Though graphically I see no difference between this and the first game, I do have to give them some special credit for changing the control scheme to allow for my legacy inverted skills. Thanks to these new controls, I'm no longer walking around like the town drunk on Mardi Gras. And now for some complaints. Why is it that we are capable of fighting off thousands upon thousands of zombies, but we can't do a simple pull-up, guys? Come on, I'm getting lured off the bridge here. You may fall down accidentally. It is a first-person shooter game, not a platformer. So why can't we just pull ourselves up? Do I want to be waiting here all day? Though there are some welcome additions and upgrades from the previous title, I do think now is the time for us to give our characters some attributes. Hey, maybe Coach could be a little stronger, have a enhanced shove. Maybe Rochelle's a nurse and she can heal you up a little better if you give her your med kit or at least do the job faster. I realize this is a shooter and on the same note so is Gears of War, but would it have killed Valve to include one defensive driving course? No longer are the only modes of campaign and versus, but now you have Scavenger where you try to find some fuel canisters to start a generator. The more you collect, the more points you get, best side wins. Oh, and as always, your opponents are going to be zombies and they're going to have an easy time stopping you because they're jacked up. Though it can be frustrating, it does add to some of the hard factor charm that you have to complete a whole campaign in one setting just to get the credit for it. What does this mean? It means that if you're playing anything on Expert, you better set aside at least 8 hours of your day, pal. Oh, and try to control your water intake so that you don't have to leave it in opportune moments. I actually picked up this game expecting it to be a glorified map pack priced at $60. But there's a lot of good stuff here, and it's fairly original among first-person shooters. Left 4 Dead 2 is definitely a worthy buy. So summing everything up, Left 4 Dead 2 is incredibly hard. It does have some improvements over the other. I don't feel that the graphics are any better, but I do enjoy the new layouts of the maps. I definitely like the fact that now the finales don't involve just getting to a boat or getting to a tank or something. Sometimes you have to go back through a level and so it changes things up. I, I particularly like the ones where you decide how it ends. You run across the bridge. You have to refill the car. That's good stuff. And I kind of like the fact that they try to make a story out of it this time around. So yeah, it's incredibly tough, but that's something I like. Left 4 Dead 2, I give it a 9.3. What took you guys so long? Party's just getting started. Want some? Huh? How about that? Huh? Want some too? You always were an asshole, Corman. Yeah.